He travels the world on exciting adventures, exploring the truths of the Catholic faith. And we'll catch up to Rob Wall, the Roman Catholic, tonight and find out where his next great adventure will take him. So please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome. I'm Father Mitch Paqua, and welcome to EWTN Live, our chance to bring you guests from all over the world. But before we get to our guest tonight, we want to remind you of the upcoming Fortnight for Freedom. Here's a little bit of what you can expect to see tomorrow evening right here on EWTN. Religious liberty, our most cherished freedom. Join the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops and EWTN as we honor the Fortnight for Freedom campaign, a nationwide observance of prayer, study, catechesis, and public action. On Thursday, June 21st, EWTN takes you to the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Baltimore, Maryland for the Holy Mass, opening the Fortnight for Freedom, led by the Most Reverend William E. Lorry, Archbishop of Baltimore, and afterwards, tune in for the world over as Raymond Arroyo and a host of guest experts discuss the attack on religious freedom. That's the Holy Mass opening the fortnight for freedom, followed by a special episode of the world over live beginning Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern here on the Global Catholic Network, EWTN. Thank you. Now, to tell you more about the Fortnight for Freedom and how EWTN will bring the events directly to you, please welcome Doug Keck. Doug, welcome. Great to be here, Father Mitch. Thanks. Obviously, I'm not Rob Wall. No, you're not. I look more like Pete the Penguin, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Pete's not going to be on tonight. But I you won't stay. get your white shirt. I won't stay too long. Yeah, we, we just feel it's so important, obviously, as you know, probably better than most, EWTN really was at the forefront of, of, of standing up for religious liberty and freedom. Uh, and we're really responding to the bishop's call and the fortnight. I think you're the only person I know who probably knew what a fortnight was, <laughs> right? It's basically two, two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, two right? Weeks. And basically the time period starting tomorrow has been picked by the USCCB. And it's really mostly for the United States, though clearly even at the recent bishop's conference, they talked about all the persecution that's going on around the world. And it's really talking about religious liberty. In fact, EW10 has a wonderful website called religiouslibertiesorg which we just rolled out, which has all the information about all the programs that we're uh, actually going to be featuring and a lot of documents and where you can find out more information. I think we'll be showing some of that on our screen for, mm -hmm. for yes. our home viewers so they can see that. It's really a nice website and we'll be adding to it as we go along. But it's really two weeks and during this period, uh, it was really picked because you've got Thomas More. John Fisher, some great martyrs for the faith who really stood up for what? Religious liberty in their time, right? Exactly. You know, the, you know both of them preferred to be ex executed rather than let the king dictate religion to them. And this, uh, and it ends for us on the 4th of July, right? where we as a nation also refused to have another king dictate to us other political issues. And from that experience of the Declaration of Independence and the, the War for Free Independence, then came the Constitution, which guarantees us in the Bill of Rights that in the, the first freedom right, exactly. that they guaranteed is that Congress shall not establish a religion nor interfere in the practice thereof. Right. It does not say that there's a separation of church and state. Right. What it does say is that Congress will not establish religion and will not interfere right. 
And that's the part where we're talking about here, the right. interference right, of the exactly. federal government. And that's why it's so important that people don't get caught up in this just being a Catholic issue or even just a mm -mm. Christian issue. It's really a liberty issue, and it's about freedom of religion, not even just freedom of worship. What's the difference between those two things? This is, it reminds me of a couple books I read about the church in the Soviet Union in which they had a separation of church and state and they gave people freedom of worship, which meant they could pray as much as they want in church, mm -hmm. but they could not bring any of their religion outside the church. Into the public square. Into the public square. It had to stay in church. And then, of course, they started closing down the churches mm -hmm. so that there were fewer and fewer of them as well. But freedom, they said you can have freedom of worship. You just cannot right. allow your religion to influence anything you do outside that church building. Right, and that's why it's expanded, really. The mandate obviously had to do with uh, contraception and, and the church being forced against its conscience in organizations like EW10, which is why we filed the lawsuit, which now there's 43 plus others who have joined us, uh, really with the idea of defending our ability to say from a conscientious perspective, we can't go along with this. But it's really greater than that, and that's really what the Fortnite's about, because it really has to do with, as you indicated, the government attempting, in a sense, to tell people of faith that you have to keep your faith to yourself. And it's really about standing up and being in the public square and, and having our voices be heard and reinforcing the fact that we don't have to rely on the government to give us these rights. These are inalienable rights, right? Exactly. That the, the, the Declaration of Independence makes it clear that these are rights that are inalienable. They cannot be taken from you because they were given to each individual directly by God and not by the state, and therefore they cannot be taken away by the state. Right, and EWTN as, as part of that has really tried to respond, and that's why I want to come on the show just quick, to really talk about all the kinds of programming as you, as you saw on the spot that was just run. Obviously we have the big mask that's kicking everything off tomorrow night. That's Thursday, June 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern, and uh, that's from Baltimore, which is uh, the sea of really the first sea in the United States. And it's starting there and it's ending in Washington, D.C. on July 4th from the Basilica of the National Shrine of Immaculate Conception. We'll carry both ends of that. And in between, there will be other events. In fact, this Friday, uh, we have the Mass from uh, New York, from St. Pat's uh, with Cardinal Dolan. That's at 10 a.m. Eastern. And all this information uh, is on our website. You can check it out on EW10.com and also our religious liberties.org we can get all this information these big events we're going to be carrying we also have a lot of programs over the years like father connor's history of the catholic church in the united states uh, a program on saint thomas more and also as it got mentioned in the spot raymond arroyo is going to be doing a special world over really tomorrow night centered all around this particular event and the kickoff of the fortnight featuring interviews with cardinal Whirl and Cardinal George from Chicago, talking about these particular issues, the people you really want to hear from. And then next week, as we continue on, we have to see what happens with the Supreme Court. The World Over is doing a special right now, scheduled for Monday, and uh, Bill Donahue and Marianne Glennon and others will be showing up on our specials on the World Over, really covering what's occurring as part of the whole Fortnight for Freedom. And the one thing Bookmark's doing, uh, we're going to be running some older programs uh, including an old interview I did with uh, Bishop Chaput on his Render Unto Caesar book and other books that really have to do with showing how intrinsic the Catholic faith and Christianity and freedom of religion was to our founding fathers. Yep, yep, very much so. And uh, I think it's very important to bring home to our audience that we are not trying to make a political party or promote one party or attack another party. We are dealing simply with a mandate that is being imposed upon us by the administration. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what we're asking people to do through these masses is join us in praying right. exactly. so that we can pray and be informed 
in order to stand up for our religious rights and the rights of everyone else in the country. Right, and I just want to read this quote from Cardinal Dolan. He says, the real issue in all of these controversies is the competition between two visions of freedom, one rooted in human dignity and the natural law, and the other arising from efforts to treat morality as subjective and religion as irrelevant. And that's right. really what it's all about. Yep. It's all about religious liberty. That's what we're talking about. Check out our religiouslibertiesorg website and get all the information. And we hope you, you join us over the next uh, two weeks and pray along with us uh, for our country. Amen. And well, thanks, thank you for be, being with us. Thanks for giving me the time. Paul. Sure. That's Absolutely. Great. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. All right. We're going to uh, uh, be back and we want to, again, remind you, uh, we'll have uh, that website, uh, www.religiouslibertiesorg, and we'll be back in just a few minutes with tonight's guest, Rob Wall. So please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. Um, our guest tonight may or may not be familiar to you, but he's well known to kids who watch EWTN and are members of EWTN's Kids Club. With help from his friend, Pete the Penguin, he makes learning the Catholic faith interesting and fun. So please welcome Rob Wall. Rob, thank you. Good to have you. Thank you so much, Father. Good to have you. I, uh, I didn't bring the penguin. I know it. I, I, you know. He lives in my freezer anyway, so uh, it's hard to get enough. him out. I uh, guess. And bring him along, but uh, he, he wanted to come. You know, Antarctica mm -hmm. is the one continent I haven't been to yet. Really? So I thought maybe if I got away with just meeting the penguin, it'd be all right. <laughs> you get to check that off the yeah. list. It's probably the only language that you don't speak. Is <laughs> yeah, well, Antarctic. And uh, yeah, right. Well, they speak English. <laughs> oh, so, they do. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. <laughs> But um, you're making a new series. Yeah. And yeah. tell people a little bit about the way you do this teaching of the faith. You know, what, what What's this roaming around that you do? Well, it, uh, it began as uh, little spots, little spots between programs in the kids section, the kids programming. Interstitials, I think, is the TV word right. for them. Uh, it could be 30 seconds, could be a minute. And what they, what they would do is plop me in front of a green screen. So... Technically, that means I stand in front of a green screen. I guess how more technical can you be? And then they uh, they take the green away and replace it with video of the Holy Land or or Rome or somewhere like that. And so therefore, I'm roaming around the world. There you go. I'm the Roman Catholic. Uh, so it started as that, and then we made it into a show. So you know, that's how the Smurfs got started. Oh well, thank you. Yeah. That's, uh, well, there's a I'm big glad future be... in that. I mean, right. <laughs> paint yourself blue, you might have a big future. Right, I know. Get a movie. But yeah, the, the, they were the Meinzelmainer in Germany. Oh. And they were just little spots little in between oh. commercials. And to keep you interested in the commercials, they would have you watch the Meinzelmainer. Uh, wow. And then they came here and became the Smurfs. Interesting. So then they got their own show. Would I have to dress that? like them? They only wear pants and a hat. I don't yeah, know yeah. if... Uh... I'm not going to go that far. No, no, no. We're not right, going right, to do right. that. So I, we're going to stick with right. your uniform. And I, I was a traveling guy, you know, the, roaming, the Roman Catholic. So right. they wanted me to, to come up with a costume, a wardrobe that would fit, you know, a tourist. So I, I found a Hawaiian shirt. Now, if you are standing against a green screen, you know, if you know anything about the weathermen, um, if they're against a green screen and they have any green in their shirt or their pants or tie, um, that gets 
taken out. So you could see a hole through them. If they weren't green. So I, um, you know, so how, I never have that trouble. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I had trouble finding a Hawaiian shirt that had no green in it. You oh, know, sure. because that's all. You know, it's flora, flora, fauna. Right. So I uh, searched far and wide and found one. I had to buy about six or seven of them. Uh, just you know, stunt double stuff. Right. I have my own stunt double. No, I don't. <laughs> you do your own stunts. No, I do my own stunts, right, right. Now, as you travel around, so using a green screen, mm -hmm. you show video mm -hmm. of a number of different places. How do you use that to teach? What, what are some of the points okay, you try question. to get across? Uh, well, we like to start with like a basic tenet of the faith, a basic aspect of our doctrine, uh, something just as simple as, uh, you know, a sacrament. The sacrament of, um, of confirmation. Okay. And then from there you can expand into, um, is there a saint? Is there a saint that, was, uh, that you can talk about that was an exemplary saint uh, uh, guided by the Holy Spirit? Um, is there a region of the world that you could focus on when talking about confirmation? And then it, it expands out from that. And EWTN, of course, has a, a library, a wealth of video Right. on places from all around the world. Right. So it's no trouble for me to, you know, request, can I, can I do a spot on uh, the Holy Land or the upper room in Jerusalem? Uh, because they most certainly will have video of it. Sure. So then I stand I, in front of that. In fact, that took a lot of that video. You did? Yep, yep. We're You're the guy that. that takes the video? Some, I did some of it, sure. Wow. They said some freelancer did it. It was you. Uh, wow. we, yeah, we went down there to make the rosary wow. in the Holy Land. And that's where some of you are. You're, you're responsible for me having a job here. Thank there you, you so much. I Father am Mitch. Smurfs. <laughs> ooh, ooh, right. So, well, so, so we, you know, so we'll um, find a saint or a sacrament and then kind of build around that um, and, and introduce as many things as we can. And now, of course, uh, you, can't, uh, you can't get too high theology and you can't treat it too simply either. You, you're addressing what age group? Uh, it's primarily probably first grade to sixth grade, okay. you know, that's the primary target. Mm -hmm. uh, but honestly, I've had people and probably people in the audience who are not in sixth grade uh, watch it and say, I love the Roman Catholic, I learned a lot, you know? Sure. Because I think when you present it to kids, you have to simplify it in ways that maybe adults have never looked at it. Sure, sure. Uh, one of the shows we did um, in season two was about the um, authority, sacred authority. You know what, how can kids explain sacred authority? Um, well, if you look at it in terms of, you know, a boss over employees or a leader over uh, some followers or, you know, then, oh yeah, the Pope is, yeah, that's what the Pope does. Sure. And what happens if, uh, if you're the leader of the company decides to leave? Well, what would happen to the company? You know, we need a leader. We need somebody in this position right. to help us, to, to guard the truth. So um, we, tried, we explained a little bit about um, what happens when a new pope is elected, you know, and all the, the procedures and the, all the customs and the rituals that, that are involved in that. And, and that can get a little complicated. So we put graphics with it and sound effects and swoops and transitions and things like that. So make it more interesting. You know, it, it's hard. It is hard to compete with what's on television, you know, for, for kids' attention. You're on TV. Right. But when they <laughs> turn this on and see me, they're stopping. There's no change in the channel. There you go. But most of the time, it's hard to compete sure. uh, for kids' attention uh, because there is so much out there that it's, it's, it could be good programming, but it's, it's glitzy, it's high end, it's, it's graphics, it just grabs your attention. The music, the sound, it's just so multi layered. Right. It's, it's hard to compete with that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, the, the amount that is spent on one cartoon series mm -hmm. comes close to the budget for the whole network here. Right, that's I mean, they, true. They, they spend enormous amounts of money making these videos uh, for, for children. And, you know, that, that's just not what we have. Right. Uh, but we are as creative, and this is why we bring you in, to be as creative Me? as anybody can be to, you know, get across some of this stuff. Right. And uh, so, you know, we've been um, doing it. We are shooting the third season uh, this week and introducing new, some new topics and new, new uh, what ideas. What are some of the topics you want to deal with this time? Well, we've, uh, we've got like two really t uh, detailed teaching episodes and three that are more kind of a general 
um, Catholic feeling, you know. Uh, one is having to do with uh, not giving up, running the race and not giving up. No matter what happens, don't give up because God is on your side even if it feels like he is not. Right. So that was kind of a sports themed you know, Olympic sure. kind of, uh, Olympics coming out this year. Yep. Um, yep. So it, it was good timing for that. And uh, another one has to do with uh, the communion of saints. Explaining just a little bit about that. You know, that's a tough concept, I think, um, for kids to understand. They may hear it all the time when they say the creed, but what does that mean? You know. See, so. now that was so easy for me growing up in Chicago because we had the dead people voting so we right. didn't have any trouble What's the problem? with the saints. Right. You know, made sense. Right. <laughs> wow, I don't know if I want to get on your bad side. You're probably <laughs> one phone call, man. That's all it takes. Hey, Uncle Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I thought you were Polish. I know, but uh, everybody Luigi's knows Italian, Uncle Luigi. right? Okay, yeah, all right, gotcha. Knows. So, yeah, we came down with our family and uh, I brought uh, my newest child. Who, uh, brand was, new. Pr yeah, proudly uh, a Polish name. So I thought maybe, you know, you inspired me. Yeah. Although we're not pronouncing it in the Polish fashion. We're just the spelling, you know. Yeah, right. right. The, so you, you, you call him Jacek. Yeah, he's, uh, we're saying it's J-A-C-E-K, which in Poland is, is Jacek. Right. But uh, we're saying Jacek. But you can call him Jacek if you'd like. Sure, I do. I do. <laughs> Ryan, Does that mean you babysit? Sick? You babysit, right? Sure, sure. All right. He, somebody, somebody, write this down. <laughs> Wait a minute. You have a lot of dead animals in your house, don't you? Yeah. That might scare the baby. So maybe, maybe not. Uh, but one of uh, one of our other episodes that we're doing this season is on uh, confirmation, and that really, really is one of my favorite sacraments. Uh, not. You know, not sacraments to experience over and over, but to talk about. Yeah, you only get confirmation you once in your once. life. You only explain that to the kids? Yeah, I do. And, um, you know, how a confirmation is, I think it's maybe a very misunderstood sacrament. Mm -hmm. It's administered, I think, in, in the United States, at least anyway, to middle schoolers, high schoolers. Mm -hmm. um, and they receive it. And I think a lot of teenagers think, what, 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 why do I have, to, what is this for? Right. I, I already receive communion every week, you know, mm -hmm. hopefully. So I have a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. I was, I was baptized, so I received the Holy Spirit and cleansing of my original sin. What, what do I need another one for? You know, I think that's a big misunderstanding. And I love to, th to, to tell people, um, well, think about the disciples, the first apostles. They were with Jesus all the time. They were certainly, they knew him and they were, you know, sealed to him. But before they received their confirmation, before they received the Holy Spirit, they were chickens. Yep. You know? Yeah, they were what did they want to do? I mean, they knew hide. Christ. They wanted to hide. They had first communion. They had the first communion. Mm -hmm. And still, before they received the Holy Spirit, they didn't know what to do. They would rather just, let's just stay together in this little group, you know in this room. Uh, not until they were inspired and received the Holy Spirit did they go out. And it is the same with, um, with a teen who receives confirmation. You may not understand it. You may not know because you, now you've received the gifts of the Holy Spirit and you, you know, now you can go out and do something. Make your faith your own. Um, don't just go because I'm telling you to go. Go because now you, you get to go. You and know? one of the other changes that happened with the apostles when they received the Holy Spirit is they started to go out to other people and talk to them about mm -hmm. Christ. And there is a huge need to go to other people and let them know about Jesus. A lot, so many people know right. so little. Right. There, I, I remember watching uh, a clip on a news program that a, uh, a comedian had gone out uh, uh, on Holy Week and said, you know, Easter is coming up. What is Easter celebrating? People were saying the birthday of Jesus. They had no idea. No idea. And we have a lot of work to do. So Yeah, we sure do. Getting uh, kids confirmed the, and the, doing the, that is good. Right. And even just the basics, you know, um, I think a lot of the kids that I talk to, I, I, I travel. I don't just do this. Um, mm -hmm. 
Uh, I don't do it full time, um, but I, I do speak and I travel around to parishes in my diocese and in the Midwest, and I, I talk to teens and youth groups um, uh, using improv, using improv comedy to talk about the faith, basics of the faith. And uh, there are a lot of misconceptions, you know? Yes. A lot of people think Ash Wednesday is a holy day of obligation. Right. You know? I've never seen Ash Wednesday Mass so packed as it was this last, yes. um, because I think there's people, of course you want to go to Mass. Right. But it's, um, most people believe that you have to go to Mass on that day. So, um, and, but then they're not showing up regularly on the days you should be coming. Though it, it's a common thing for people to show up on the days we're giving stuff away. Hey, that's true. <laughs> Even if it is dirt, right? Yeah. I mean, when we Even give ashes, it's, it's right. free. Hey! And yeah. usually they don't take up a collection. That's another thing right, they Right, that's like. true, right. Ash Palm Wednesday. Sunday, they come and get their poems. Hey, look what I got, yeah. yeah. Palm, uh, Ash Wednesday is a, uh, it's kind of a stressful um, mass for me to attend just because of the whole, you know, large forehead. I mean, seriously, I'm the, I'm the dude walking out of Mass with the giant, the giant, the giant cross smudge thing. You know, that's me. That is me. Well, see, yeah. in seminary, we were told to target people like you. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I should have known. Right, I should have known. You, and no. you thought it was just an accident? Yeah, I thought it was an years. accident. Because no, when I come up, the priest, like, reloads his thumb. He's like, <laughs> hold on, I'm not done yet. Boom, right there. It's definitely re the targeting. I look like I had butted a <laughs> chimney sweep is what I did. Boom. So um, I, that's, that's kind of stressful for me. So I probably don't need to talk about it anymore. Uh, but I, I, uh, I really do enjoy uh, connecting with uh, youth because I think if you, if you show them, you know, you don't have to be so serious. You can um, let your guard down. And, 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 you know, realize that uh, I'm not anything special. Uh, I'm not going to talk above you or talk down to you. Um, and once you do that, I think they're a little more ready sure. to listen. Yeah, yeah. You know, and there's uh, it's, a wide variety of ways to communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can get uh, to people of a wide variety of age groups, you know, in uh, using various techniques. Um, Mostly being authentically yourself. Right. That's key. Right. That's key. Um, but um, there are lots of ways to, to, to do this. Television is a great one. Um, and the Internet is great. Um, there are so many bad things about the World Wide Web, the Internet. But right. there are so many good things. There really are. Um, so it, it's, um, you've got to be able to help a teen uh, or anybody discern the moral use of, of the media that we have. And one of the missions I would like to see young people pick up is their use of the internet to create places to evangelize there. Mm. They might be a little more nervous doing face-to-face -face kind right. of evangelization, right. but instead of the very narcissistic kind of websites on Facebook and other sites mm -hmm. like that, where it's all talking about me. And uh, like I, I heard about one narcissist who was saying, oh, have I been talking about myself this whole time? I'm sorry. Tell me, what do you think of me? You know, this, <laughs> this is not, this That's is, great. This is Facebook. That's great. Whereas I'll bet you could get a lot of these young people fired up to learn how to use That's the true. internet idea. to evangelize more and make that a more faith-friendly place. That's great. Uh, it, it's, it's so tough with, um, with our access to information now. I bet I know there are people in this audience right now. If I would ask somebody who can find me the, the fastest, the height of Mount Everest, somebody could do it. You know, somebody could uh, find out for me oh, how many uh, animals are in Arizona, how many species. You could find it instantaneously. Yep. Yep. But if you step into church and tell a, a, a kid to pray, there's nothing instantaneous about that. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to, to quiet yourself and quiet your soul and to listen and to be attentive to those around you who could be God speaking through them. So in this world of instantaneous technology and, and get whatever you want at any second, that's hard to compete with too. And, you know? It is. But the other side of that, that we 
uh, I, I just was talking to a convert friend of mine today, and he said he's, you know, he's been in a lot of different denominations and stuff, but he said nobody has a sense of a trinity like I've been finding in the Catholic Church. And that's so that we're, in one sense, helping to move them from the instantaneous mm -hmm. to begin to focus part of their life on the eternal. And that's, that's a big shift. Mm -hmm. I'm, Plato's talked about that as one of the key issues of philosophy. And young people and, and older people right. need to do that. Right. Yeah, this, this, this Facebook thing is not just teens or young people. It's, it's the world. Yeah, yeah now, uh, we're going to go to a break pretty soon, but I do want to ask you Go, because i got to update my Facebook stats. <coughs> okay, we're, yeah, good. Right, yeah. <laughs> I'm on TV. <laughs> right. um, what would be the uh, aspect of evangelizing children and young people that you find yourself burning the most to try and get out there. What do you want to say to them as what you sense they need to hear? Okay, I get to think about that question? No. Oh. I thought you, you were saying... I'm looking for... A, oh, a, I thought you said we're going to go to break and you think about no, no, this. No. Darn it. This is like the internet. I want an instant answer. Oh, gotcha. I think um, the, the, the most burning uh, issue is letting a young person feel that they have worth that comes from God. It doesn't come from your friends, or the things you have, or how you look, or how you look, or, or what you say or do or, or smell. It doesn't even come from your parents or yourself, your sense of unworth. Don't feel unworth because of anybody and don't feel worth from a boyfriend or girlfriend or, you know, and it sounds strange, but your sense of worth doesn't even come from your parents. It comes from God. You already have it. So, you know, letting somebody realize that their sense of worth and dignity is, is God-given. Yep. And don't let anybody tear that down. Yep. You know? I think it's the most yeah, important yeah. thing. And to, to, I, I think with that, to become centered in the mm. fact that it does come from God, your looks are going to fade away. Your well, money is going to get taxed and spent. You know, uh, all this is going to go. But your value mm -hmm. in God's eyes is going to be for all eternity if you turn to Him. And if you turn away from Him, then you will be in a place uh, uh, in hell mm -hmm. where nobody has any possibility mm -hmm. of sensing your value. Hmm. You know, only in heaven will that your value be cherished for all eternity. And in hell, it'll be hated for all eternity. And this is the choice that we want people to make. And it's a, a key one. We're going to uh, take a break. We want to remind you that you can join the EWTN Kids Club by going to www.ewtn.com slash EWTN Kids. And that'll get you uh, hooked up with the EWTN EWTN Kids Club. We're going to take a little break. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. and want to get your questions and your comments as well as those of our studio audience. So please stay with us.
Thank you. Welcome back. I want to let you know that Rob Wall's uh, series, The Roman Catholic, is available on DVD through EWTN's Religious Catalog. You can call them at 1-800-854-6316 or you can go to our website, www.ewtnreligiouscatalog.com and order those. Uh, it's a great present to give to grandkids and nieces and nephews. Uh, also, we want to remind you that if you can come down here to Alabama and be part of our studio audience, we would love to have you. have a great audience here to, tonight from a wide variety of parts of the country, and we'd love to have you join us too. So call our pilgrimage department at 205-271-2966. Or again, go to the website, www.ewtn.com. They'll give you all kind of help about coming down here. All right. You ready for some questions? I believe I am. Let's start off with a call. We have Joe on the line. Hello, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Father. Hi, Rob. Hi. You have a great show, Rob. I watch it myself. <laughs> and uh, Are you I was fifth? just wondering, if, uh, at what age should a parent allow a child to decide whether to go to church on Sunday or not? Oh. Uh, thank you very much. I'll hold on. <laughs> now, just so folks know, uh, Rob has children all the way from what's... 20. Well, 20 is the oldest and yes. the youngest is... is... Three, four months, something like yeah, that. Yeah, three, yeah, four yeah. months. So yeah. you've, got, you've got a range in yes. which you have to make that decision. Right. And the decision is you got to go to Mass. <laughs> <laughs> this is my house. Well, yeah, go to Mass. You're going to Mass. Um, you know, um, I, I don't think there is an age where you stop, you know, putting the pressure on mm -hmm. uh, up until they're... They're 18, definitely. You know, you're, you have to go to Mass. And you get the grumbles. Yes, you get the grumbles and the mumbles um, from your teens. It doesn't matter how good of a person they are, how wonderful and, and compassionate they are. Um, it's their inertia is, is in their blood, you know? Whether it's uh, inertia to, I don't want to go to school, I don't want to go to Mass. Um, and I think if, I'm, if you got a child stuck in that, um, what I've done is emphasize... It's what we do as a family. You know, we do this together. We go to mass together. So just just come along with us. You know, um, I don't I don't really get a lot of um, a lot of fighting about that. They know we do as a family. Right. And if you can't do it with us as a family, you got to do it sometime this weekend. Yep. Um, because I think if you just emphasize, you are called to be a part of our family. You are part of our family. We need you. In the same way, you are called to be a part of the church. We're not just making you go because you have to. We're making you go because you are gonna, you're going to hear it someday. You know, you are called to be there. Another very important key is the fact that you, as the dad and husband, go with your yes, wife definitely. and your children. Definitely. And that, you know, mom and dad are showing a united front. Mm hmm and in families where dad goes to church every week and prays with the family every day, 80 to 85 percent of the children will stay in the faith. And if it's only mom and not dad, mm -hmm. only 40 percent wow. stay. That's a huge jump. Huge jump. So it's very important. We have a question from our studio. It's, ma'am, where are you from? St. Thomas and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Great. Uh, I, I was over there not too long ago. We were sorry that it was raining so much. When well, we were there. the people who needed the rain were glad. So uh, I was there to preach anyway. So what's uh, your, your comment? Um, I've been concerned because I feel with the in, uh, emphasis on the electronic media, the print media for children is being neglected. When I was younger, we had magazines like Catholic Miss and so forth. And I see, I've so, seen some beautiful magazines put out by, for instance, the Mormons and the Salvation Army for young people. I like them because you can leave them different places and one never knows who's going to pick them up. And I just was wondering, I realize this isn't your specialty, 
but I was wondering what you thought about this. Well, um, like I said, I don't do this full time. My actual career um, that I studied in college is graphic design. And I, I was a part of graphic design before computers were even involved in it. So um, I understand the, the beauty of print and how wonderful it can be to hold a magazine and to hold something and look at it. Um, I, I think that she's right. Um, to get a, a something like that that's, non, that's traditional media, but actually today it would be considered non-traditional because what's accepted as normal now is an iPad or, or a, a smartphone, you know, that's considered normal now. So I think that's a great marketing technique sure. for them to give a, a free magazine. It's something, of course, the Catholic Church could do too, but that's a, it's expensive. It's very expensive. It's expensive to make something nice and slick and, and wonderful. And we have so many resources that we have to use to help people, to fight for religious liberty, Right. You know, to, to feed and house our priests. Um, it would be great to be able to allocate funds to do something so wonderful and slick. Um, but we do have some great things, some great new media mm -hmm. um, that adults are catching on to. Um, there are some great things you can see on the Internet that help you learn about your faith. Uh, YouTube has some great, you could type in some, you know, there's a lot of stuff you shouldn't see. But there are some many things out there that are really cool. I know. That help you learn about your faith. I saw some Roy Rogers shows on there. Who, who's Roy Rogers? Yeah, you kids. <laughs> Not to get you over there. Yeah, I, no, I know who he is. <laughs> but it's a, uh, I remember as a boy that in, in grammar school that we would get a Catholic comic book called Treasure Chest. Hmm. And it did a variety of things. Some parts about the faith, there were, there were these sections about the persecution of the church in the Soviet Union. Um, there was a history of Catholic communities here in the United States and, you know, stories yeah. and, and dealing with little moral issues that we could cope yeah. with. All that was done in various parts of the uh, comic book. And I used to read that every week, you know, enjoyed that. So that's a, maybe, maybe some more lay people can do that kind Bring of that work back, yeah. as well. I have another question from our studio audience. Ma'am, where are you from? Uh, Freeport, New York. And good to have you here. What's your question? What can be done more at the parish level so that young people don't think confirmation is graduation? Yep. Right. That's a great question. Uh, I do some uh, confirmation workshops, uh, basically, to, to help kids, the, the, the candidates, catechumens, not catechumens, but the confirm, what is the name? Confirmande? Confirmande. Uh, confirmande, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, to learn about uh, the sacrament they're about to, um, to receive. Mm -hmm. And um, we stress that so much that uh, we want to see you back. This confirmation thing doesn't mean I'm done. Woo! Right. Last thing I have to get, check, you know, got it, I'm done. Um, it is just the beginning of, um, of your active participation in your faith. Yep. Now, and I think you, to bring it to the parish level, you have to provide things for kids to get involved in, you know, at the middle school and high school level. Yes. Um, there are youth <laughs> groups uh, specifically geared toward middle schoolers and some towards high schoolers. We have them in our parish mm -hmm. in, in Grove City, Ohio. Um, if you have something for them to do to get involved in, and then ministries. If you see a kid in the choir, there could be a few other kids in the, in the parish that are like, I guess I could do that. Sure. Maybe they could lecture. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they could take part in the daycare on Sundays. Find something that you like. And if your parish has those opportunities for kids, you know, hopefully that will spur them on to say, well, I guess I could do that. You know? Sure. You know, and uh, certainly a uh, number of the kids are, would be able to join groups like the Knights of Columbus. Mm -hmm. uh, the Knights of Columbus from my parish just recently went to another parish that was very, very poor, uh, poor grammar school. And they went in there and started painting and they got lots of people to volunteer. I mean, these are the kinds mm -hmm. of projects that can go on. But I also think to this lady's question, we have to encourage people to keep their education 
in the faith mm. up to their maturity level. You know, you don't stop learning right. just because you get out of high school. You're going to learn on the job, right. going to maybe go to college, and there's a lot to learn through life. And if your faith stays stuck at a junior high level, you know, how are you going to cope with the question, especially for college students? I, they need to be prepared because so I'm hearing it constantly. Professors all over right. the country are attacking the faith. And are our kids ready to have an answer to those attacks on the faith? And that's very important. And they got to know that those answers have already been given. The questions yep. have already been answered. Oh, oh for easily. centuries. Oh, that's the same. The atheists same, are so boring. Yeah, the same stupid, <laughs> same stupid questions keep coming up. Like they just trend again and again. Yep. And, and the ones that come up with them think they're so creative, you know. You know, and, and I was in the bookstore Monday. I had to pick up something. Uh, and I was looking in the abnormal psychology section for a book on... Did uh, you see uh, my picture there? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes it was, uh, <laughs> more importantly, in the abnormal psychology section, that's where they had the books promoting atheism. <laughs> <laughs> so, seemed appropriate to me. We have another question here from the studio audience. Man, where are you from? Corpus Christi, Texas. I love it down there. Great I place. I say hello to all of my friends and the priests that are at St. Patrick Parish and also those at Christ the King Parish. Um, my question is, how do you keep uh, young people inspired once they make their sacraments and also to inspire them to consider a vocation to either mm. the religious life or to the priesthood? Well, I think, um, I, I don't know who said this. It's, it's a quote I, uh, you, you probably will know, um, that the greatest inspiration for the relig religious life comes from your, your mother and father, the, the, a good marriage. You know, if I am devoted to my wife and I love her as, as, a, as, a, as a husband and we love each other as husband and wife, um, then our kids are more likely to be inspired to, to discern, you know, to the religious life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that the secular world would never think that would be a connection. How can you, your son be inspired to be a priest if he comes from a home where the, you know, two people are married? Um, well, it's because they, they, they understand giving love. Yep. They understand what it means to, to self-sacrifice. Yep. You know, they say, you know, I've, I know have people said to me, how can, a, how can a priest know anything about marriage or what it's like uh, taking care of kids? Um, well, I'll tell you, our pastor is, is like every time he goes out, he is on 24-7. It's like he's being married. You know, he, he's always giving advice, always listening to, and he's got a school, ki school kids, 400 school kids that are his responsibility. And I pay bills. He pays bills on this big church, you know, so... A, a priest uh, uh, takes the same responsibilities as a married couple. Um, you're both serving. It's a self-sacrificing love. And one of the other things, too, I'll just let you in on a little secret. Oh, good. Is that because I'm not married, all the married people tell me everything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you know all the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to another call. We have Dan on the line. Hello, Dan. Hi, Father. How are you? I'm well, thank you, sir. What, where are you from? I'm from Connecticut. Great. Um, I'd like to tell Rob that uh, while surfing channels, I've come across his program. It's interesting. It's well put together. It, it's a wonderful vehicle for teaching children. And that's my question is, uh, I think you agree with me, we've lost a great percentage in these last couple of generations. And are there any other vehicles of learning that we can that we can come up with for teaching children at all levels, whether it's pre-K, elementary, secondary, because I don't see it at the parish level. I don't see it at the diocesan level. I don't really see it uh, much at all. So I'm going to hang up and hope that you, you can answer my question. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I don't know. Next caller. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a complicated question, yeah. yeah. I think different parishes across the country are doing it well, and some aren't doing it at all. Um, programs, programs for kids, um, uh, bringing uh, Bible studies in, 
you know, Catholic Bible studies, what? Um, interesting Bible studies, video series, um, vacation Bible schools that are Catholic themed are great ideas. Um, we need somebody out there writing them, making them, you know? And, and I suspect, you know, what I'd said before about young people working on the internet mm -hmm. and the social media, I'll bet this is going to be another area where they can really revive uh, a Catholic ministry. This, you know, you know, the kind of work you're doing, mm -hmm. maybe to also help motivate them to mm. come up with creative stuff because video cameras are everywhere right. now. Right, you're right. Everywhere. And parishes could do stuff. Right. Getting the kids it is to do it. Easy to edit, to shoot and to edit. Uh, anybody can do it with um, with a new laptop. Yep. Um, doesn't even have to be new. A new laptop. Um, you can shoot and edit, and then yep. post it, and it can be fun and entertaining, um, and maybe just that that's that little bit of uh, catechesis yep. could could help somebody. I think we can get people motivated. Another call on the line. Hello, Gina. Hi, Father Mitch. Hi. Where are you from? I'm from New Jersey. Wonderful. And what's your question? My question is, why do you have to be a specific age to receive confirmation? Well, I know that confirmation uh, used to be given um, uh, to babies, right? Still is. It still is. In the Eastern Rites, oh, the, you know, I've, I've confirmed you've a confirmed number of babies. babies. Sure. Um, because it's the, the final uh, sacrament of initiation, right. baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation. Um, and I don't know the history of the sacrament in the United States. I just know that uh, here we determine that an age uh, where a, a person can appropriate, appropriately decide how they want to pursue their faith, how they want to actively become a member of the faith, um, is, uh, is the age that we give confirmation. Um, and I, I know it's eighth grade in some mm -hmm. parts and ninth grade, tenth grade. Um, I don't really know the history of the sacrament in, in the United States. But One of the issues people wanted to have firm before confirmation was whether or not the young person knew the faith very well. Did they know the basics of the catechism? Mm. So that you, you, there are certain things you needed to know before your first Holy Communion to understand that. Same with confirmation. Mm. But they wanted you to know more so that you understood what you're getting into and so that you could explain it to others. Mm. That, was the, that was one of the reasons. And, so, and I know that um, a lot of people who receive confirmation st still don't quite understand it. Mm. Um, and that's okay. That's okay if you don't really understand it um, and you are open to receiving it and you still don't really quite get it. It'll come, you know. Uh, it'll come to you. It's almost like uh, the people uh, who open gifts at Christmas, you know. Right. You have some people that just tear the thing open, don't read the directions. I'm, are you one of those? I don't know how to read the directions. Oh, I'm but sorry. Because <laughs> I'm a direction reader. Uh, that's good. Now, <laughs> one direction I'm reading now, though, is that we're out of town. Oh, that was a good segue. Very yeah. good. Very nice. <laughs> See, I can follow some yeah, directions. Yeah, that's good. Oh, but yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those things that we have to just grow into understanding. Rob, I want to thank you for Certainly. coming in to do this new series with us and for being on our show tonight. And may the Lord bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, we can bring you Rob and his series for children and all the other programs because this network is brought to you by you. So please keep us in between your gas bill, your electric bill, and your cable bill, and we'll be able to pay all of our bills too. Thank you.